seen that firsthand this week. So be ready. Be ready. That's always a message. Be ready. Know where your salvation lies. But the message today is the King of Glory. The King of Glory. If y'all would, turn to the book of Psalms, chapter 24. And we're going to break these few verses down and just learn a little bit about our Savior and our God. And who is the King of Glory? Psalm chapter 24, starting in verse 1, says, The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. The earth is the Lord's, and they that dwell therein. Everything, everything. And if you're His, and if you're His, He's got you. He has got you. You know, and also in Second in First Corinthians ten twenty six says the same scripture for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. They're all His. I mean, it's reassuring that it's His. And if He's taking care of what's His, He's not going to lose any that He has called. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's given us His words. We know the end and what it's going to be. It's all His. So why do we fret so much? If y'all would, well, I'll read you a few verses out of Psalms 50. Psalms 50, verses 7 through 15. Tells us this. It says, Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel. I will testify against thee, I am God, even thy God. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have to have been continually before me. He says, I will take no bullet out of thy house, nor he goats out of thy folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine, and the fullness thereof. Will I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? Offer unto God thanksgiving, and pay thy vows unto the Most High. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. He's telling you, pray, sing praises to Him. Give Him thanksgiving. Glorify God, for He is the King of glory. Verse 2 tells us, For He hath founded it upon the seas, and establisheth it, establisheth it upon the floods. So, beloved, we know that in the beginning, when God come down, the Spirit of God moved upon the water. And God said, He established it with the words of His mouth. He spoke everything into existence. He is the creator of all things. He created you. He knew you before you were formed in the womb. He's got a plan for you. You're predestined in this life to fulfill that which He's called you to do. And you don't know what that calling is unless you're seeking His Word and you're seeking Him all the time, constantly in prayer and everything that you do, looking for His provisions that He's put out there before you. Give Him glory when He's done something in your life. Don't glorify yourself or those around you. Give the glory to God. Give it to Him because that is where it belongs for He is the King of glory. Psalms 104. says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God. Thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Who covers thyself with light as with a garment? 
who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angels spirits as ministers of flame and fire, who laid the foundations of the earth that it should, be, should not be removed forever. Thou coverest it with the deep as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. At thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of thy thunder they hastened away. During the flood, he, at the voice of his thunder, at his voice, the waters receded. Verse 8. They go up by the mountains, they go down by the valleys into the place which thou hast found, founded for them. They hast set a bound that they may not pass over. All the rivers run into the oceans, but yet the oceans never overflow. When the rain falls from heaven, it might run out in the streets, but yet he's got bounds for everything. He's got everything under control. There's nothing out here that's going on that's not under His power and under control. Then we have to trust in Him. Verse 10, He sendeth the springs into the valleys which run among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. By them shall the fowls of, the he of heaven have their habitation which sing among the branches. He watered the hills from His chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He calls it the grass to grow for the cattle and herd for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth. And wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. The trees of the Lord are full of, of, of sap, the cedars of Lebanon which he hath planted. Where the birds make their nest as for the stork, the fir trees, and her house. The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats, and the rocks for the conies. He appointed the moon for season, the sun knoweth his going down. Thou makest darkness, and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. The young lions roar after their prey and seek their meat from God. The sun arises. They gather themselves together and lay them down in their dens. Man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are thy works in wisdom. Hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. So is this great and wide sea wherein are, are things creeping in innumerable, both small and great beasts. There go the ships. There is that Leviathan whom thou hast made to play therein. These wait all upon thee, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. That thou givest them they gather, thou openest thine hand. They are filled with good. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die, and return to their dust. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created. And thou renewest the face of the earth. The glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. He looketh on the earth, and it trembleth. He toucheth the hills, and they smoke. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth. And let the wicked be no more. Bless thou the Lord, O my soul. Praise ye the Lord. So he gives the spirit of life and creates life. He takes your breath in death. He creates the water that runs across the mountains, into the streams, into the rivers, that feed the animals, that feed the fields, that feed you. He maketh man that gets up and goes to work and goes about his daily business to harvest that in which he's given you. Give him the glory. Give him glory. Don't be glorying in your own works and your own efforts. But give glory unto God. That's what he's saying. He said, I've created all these things. And he's created them for you, for his good pleasure. He's created you for his good pleasure. Take advantage of what He's given you. 
and give him glory. Verse 3 says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? Who shall ascend into his hill? And who shall stand in his holy place? Psalm 15, 1 and 2 says, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? It is he that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. Who worketh righteousness? But we're all sinners. We're all sinners. Our righteousness is at filthy rags. Isaiah 64 and 6 tells us filthy rags. <coughs> Paul tells us in Romans 3 and 10 that there's none righteous. No, not one. Not one. On our own, we'll never dwell in that holy hill. We'll never be with Him. But if it wasn't for that, what Christ had done upon the cross at Calvary. Thanks to God, that bruised reed, that tender root out of dry ground, He sent Him for us. Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42 starting in verse 3. says, A bruised reed shall he not break. And the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth. And in the isles shall wait for his law. Thus saith God the Lord, He that created the heavens, and stretcheth them out, He that spreadeth forth the earth, and that which cometh out of it, He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and the Spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. He says, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare before they spring forth. I tell you of them. He said, I am the Lord. He requires praise. He wants you to give Him the glory. He has done all this for you. He has sent Christ Jesus, that bruised reed, to die for you. That in Him that your righteousness, it's His righteousness hidden in Him, that you have access to that holy hill. It's through Christ alone that's the only way that you'll ever partake in that which is to come. It's through that work that He had done in believing in Him. Hebrews 4. Verse 2 and 3 tells us that. Hebrews chapter 4. Because it's only to those that believe. And you have to believe. And in order, in your belief, you should walk as a Christian. You should walk in newness of life. Putting off all that old, that old sin, those old habits, all that old stuff that's drug you down in the past. You, in order to believe, you have to walk worthy through faith. Through faith. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2 says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, speaking of the Jews, but the word preached did not profit them. Why? Because they're blinded. Their hearts were darkened. They wouldn't receive the word of God. They wouldn't receive Jesus when he came. Instead, they crucified him. They wouldn't receive it. But yet he still shows mercy. 
the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, it shall, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. That rest which is in Christ Jesus, if they would believe, that belief mixed with faith, you can enter into his rest because you have to be trusting in him. You have to be wholeheartedly trusting in him. Rest in Christ. Thank you, Lord. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 tells us that for He, which is God, has made Him, which is Christ Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. We being those believers, those that believe, might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Three in one. Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost that dwells within us. God sent His Son to die. And when He died, He sent us a comforter that we might believe. That faith, it's His faith in us. It's the faith that He's given us that we have to have. Well, if He's given us that faith, He's given us the ability to call upon Him. He's given us the ability to believe if we would just submit and let Him do the work through us. If we would just give Him glory and praise. It's not about what I can do. It's about Christ and what He has done. Isaiah chapter 33, verses 15 says, He that walketh righteously... And speaketh uprightly. He that despiseth the gain of the oppression, that shaketh his hand from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil, he shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of the rocks of rocks. Bread shall be given him, his waters shall be pure, shall be sure, excuse me. But he that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, there's only one. There's only one, and we have to trust in him. Back to Psalms twenty four. He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, verse 4, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. It is he, that one with clean hands, that one that was made, made sin for us, that died upon that cross. That's the only way. He's the only way. This is the generation, verse 6, of them that seek Him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Verse 7 says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. He said, Lift up your heads. Open the gates of your heart. Call upon Him. Call upon Him. Christ said, I am the door. No man enters but by me. He said, I am the door. Open the door of your hearts and let him in. Let him work in your life. Get your head out of the gutter and start serving me. Give him glory. Give him praise. Continually. Continually, he says. Praise him. Lift up your heads. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. And praise God. Because when we are weak, yet He is made strong. But we tend in our weakness to just get on ourselves. We just want everybody to feel sorry for me. Well, I want to praise my Savior. I want to give Him the glory. 
I want to look to Him for my answers. Because I sure can't find them on my own. I can find ways all about the truth. I can find ways to make what I want seem to happen. But in the end, in the end, there's no profit. There's no profit to it. I could go out in this world and make money. A ill gain, ill gotten gain. Boy, it's so easy to do in this society. But in the end thereof, there's no profit in it. For the end is death. The end is death. It's what you're doing here to serve your king that's going to be your everlasting reward. He said, I go to prepare a place. And where I go, he's, <laughs> he's going to prepare you a mansion, a room. And he said, I'll receive you unto myself. He's going to call you up. He said, I might not. I might. I don't know. It depends. There might be somebody come in before you. No. He said, if he's called you, he's got a place prepared for you. But you've got to live for him. You've got to get your head up out of the ditch and stand up and praise him. Open the gates, he said. Open your gates. Don't hold it in. Let him out. Let him out. He said, I'm the door. He said, my sheep, they know my name. Hear his words. Hear his words. Call upon him. Call upon him. Don't keep him bottled up. Don't keep him inside. You don't know when your life is going to cease on this earth. Don't let somebody see you with your head in the ditch. Don't let somebody come around with you all feeling sorry for yourself. Lift your head up and praise Jesus. Give God the glory in your sufferings, in your persecutions, in your troubles, in your trials. For He tells there ain't no temptation common to man. He's delivered. He's got a way for you to get out. Anything that's afflicting you today, you can get out of it because He's given you a way. He said, just call on me, for I'm the King of glory. He said, I am the King of glory. Praise Him. Praise Him. Open your gates. Let it out. Let it out. If He's in you, it's got to come out. You can't keep it bottled up. Because there's a dying world out there that needs to see the light of Christ in you. Even if you've been in darkness, He's brought you into the light. He says there, He is the light. He's the one that enlighteneth all men. He's, he's that light of man. Let that light shine. Let that light shine. Verse 8 says, Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Beloved, He's mighty in battle. He can fight your battles and He'll overcome your battles. As a matter of fact, He has already overcome your battles. But we got to receive it. We've got to receive what He's done for us. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. He shall come in. But you've got to get your head up. Open up to Him. Cast your cares upon Him. Cast your cares upon Him. Verse 10 says, Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory of glory the Lord of hosts the same Lord that said let there be same one that moved in your spirit the day that he called you out and set you apart and you knew that you were chosen that God was working on you when you feel that conviction that only he can give and you step forward and you accepted Him. When you opened them gates and said, Lord, I want you in to come into my life. I want you in my heart so that I can live for you. Lord, take all these afflictions, all these sins that I've ungodly committed and take them, Lord, I cast them upon you. I'm giving them all to you. Whatever it may be, there ain't no sin so great that He can't take it on. And He took it all on at the cross because there ain't nothing in and of ourselves that's any good. Our sufficiency is of God. It is not of ourselves. 
but it's of God. And it's God that we ought to be praising through His Son, Jesus Christ, who give us access to that throne, to that holy hill, that one day that we can be with Him. We'll see Him as He is and we'll be like Him. We'll be transformed in the twinkling of an eye. Transformed. This sinful flesh is going to be put off one day. And today could be that day. Do you know what side of the gate you're going to be standing on? Are you keeping your gates shut and standing behind them gates and holding out God? Or are you going to open them gates and let Him into your life and give Him the glory that He do deserves? That He duly deserves. Praise His name. Get your head up out of the gutter and get with it. Start serving your king. Because if you ain't serving him, you're serving the flesh and you're serving the world. Serve him. Serve him. You know, ain't nothing that he don't see. He knows the hairs on your head. Ain't one spare soul for a father that your father don't know about. Ain't a spare that hits the ground that he don't know about. Bible tells Christ says, Are you not worth better than they? Are you not worth many sparrows? He knows what's going on in your life. He knows your troubles that you're dealing with. He knows the decisions that you've made, whether they're selfish or if they've been thought out. He knows these things, but yet He still loves you. He still loves you, and He cares. And He'll be with you if He's called you to the bitter end. To the bitter end. There's no telling how many people, how many nights have left bars in a drunken stupor not being able to drive at all. But God had got them home safely for His mercy, hoping that they would repent. Hoping that they would repent. There's been those same people that drove home and there's been people that died on account of their sin. Were they ready? Will you be ready in your folly? Call upon Him. He'll set you free. He will set you free if you'll trust in Him and believe in Him. He said, cast your cares upon me. For He cares for you. And He does. And He'll take your sins and those burdens that you overcome by and He'll relieve you. He'll give you a new peace. He'll give you that peace that only He can give. Not that peace that you're looking for in this world, but that peace that only Christ can give in a dying world. So call upon Him. Give Him the glory that He's due and open up them gates and let Him in your life and let that light shine through you so that everybody can see. Amen. Any questions or comments?